Hello everyone and welcome back to Stranglehold on the Xbox 360. I'm one more sheep yet again and this upcoming section is one of the hardest sections of the game. Not what I was talking about when earlier on when I was on about the shooting sequence, what you call it, standoff sequence. No, 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 this standoff sequence. Now, the sequence itself is easy enough to get past, but the difficulty is... Oh shit, there's some Matrix stuff going on right there. Um, the hard part of it is actually after the sequence because this room is obnoxious in terms of killing the enemies. It is so, so difficult to do so. So what do I recommend? Well, first things first, killing these goons. That's what I recommend first. And um, I actually recommend doing something for this upcoming area that I didn't do right here. And I recommend moving back. Now, by here, like I said, I'm being an idiot. I'm standing right out in the open and I'm like, oh shit, they're, they're shooting at me, what do I do? Rah. What I recommend you do is run back through the hallway that you came and turn around the corner. I don't know if you can do that, but I recommend doing that purely because, well, there's so many enemies coming out at you in this room. All the enemies are very surprisingly resilient against your attacks. And uh, they're extremely accurate, so what can I say is either dive everywhere and hope that you don't die, or just move back. I did the whole diving everywhere and hoping I was not going to die strategy, and it just happened to work. But right now, folks, you are seeing like the fifth take of this, because I died so many times in this area, it is insane. In fact, you actually saw one of the deaths, as I said, so... Honestly, that area is just... I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. It's so trialy and errory. It's not as bad trial error... Tri tri it's not as bad in terms of trial and error in terms of difficulty until the final level where... It took me a good... Ooh, 30 attempts just to get past the first sequence in that level. Oh, uh, can't wait to go and rant about that stage when I get to it in two parts of time, because that's it, is it, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually on the final stretch of the game, believe it or not. So, yay. You! Okay, so he's ran off. And, uh, remember those SWAT team mooks I mentioned earlier? Now, not only are we t fighting a slightly even more tougher I good. I am good with the English, yeah? Not only are we fighting an even tougher variation of these mooks, but we are fighting them in an arena covered in nothing but smoke and fog. Which means we need to hunt them down and shoot them before they shoot us, because unfortunately, them being AI and all, as you can guess, they are unaffected by the smoke. They can see through the smoke just by no problem. But fortunately, when they do shoot you, what you can actually use is use their shooting at you as an advantage, because what they can do, basically their guns will flash. When the guns flash, you'll know where they are, so you can just simply aim at them. Your cursor will go red when you're hovering over the enemy. So you can you can sort of guess where they are just by looking at the them shooting at you. Which is good, because it makes this a little bit easier. But I do recommend moving around in this sequence a lot. And I mean a lot, because this will take you a good couple of attempts at least. In fact, I'm very lucky that I got the health for that, because otherwise I wouldn't have gone past this attempt. So yeah, when you do run low on health, do not be afraid to use the health pickups on the walls. And they're always placed on a wall, so sometimes they're placed on a floor or like a table or something. But they're always very easy to come by whenever you, you think you need them. So yeah, there's that. But like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this area is obnoxiously difficult in terms of, well, surviving and just flat, just normally killing these mooks because, like I said, they have a lot more health. They, they are a lot trickier to get hold of. And for the life of me, I have no idea. I Never mind, I just figured out how to get that crane. No, nope, no, I didn't. Okay, I have no idea how to get that crane. <laughs> so don't ask me. I thought you had to, I thought you had to cut, shoot down the thing on the ceiling, but clearly you didn't. So, yeah, but basically one thing you will find is that during this point in the game, you will always... I just activate barrage mode on my pistol. Well, okay, I guess, but you will all... You will basically always find yourself always constantly running out of ammunition, no matter which gun you're using. So, you will need to run up to enemies and pick up their guns all the time, ladies and gentlemen, with this one. 
Which is not a fun, it's not a fun time. Because if you run out of mission ammo, well basically then you just have your fists. And if you punch someone with your fists, well yeah, you do get your, you do get that gun off them immediately. But getting close enough to someone to do that in this mission is like suicide, ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying ladies and gentlemen a lot, aren't I, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I apologize. Uh, like, I'm really tired today. I don't know why. I, it's, I had one of those weird things where I, I've had a very good night's sleep. I mean, I went to sleep at 9 o'clock. I got up at 12 o'clock. And I, I still... I st I'm still tired, and I don't know why. It's normally more than enough sleep for me. It's probably just my lack of sleep catching up to me, because I'm usually working on these videos and going out and meeting up with people so much without sleeping these days that it's just all caught up with me. But I digress. That is this room pretty much done. Now, it's it seemed like I did it pretty... Well, not easily, but it seemed like I did it without much problems there. That's because I cut out, like, five deaths, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah, just be careful. And from this point on in the game, most of the enemies we run into, I believe, are going to be the stronger variety. Stronger, stronger, ver the stronger versions. <laughs> oh, God, my English is failing me, this this recording session. Uh, but seriously, we are going to be running up to all the stronger versions of the enemies now, which... I think they're basically the remainders of all the guy mooks we're going to be fighting now from this mission onto the next mission, and there's an entirely new couple of enemy types in the last mission, which I think are actually weaker in terms of defense than these mooks, but they do a lot more damage to you in the long run, so... I got, Don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure, but from my experience, that's what I sort of think. As far as, as far as I know, my experience could be lying to me because I can't remember stuff all that well. Oh! 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 Combo! Oh! Oh! Bloody hell. <laughs> I meant that both as a joke and as in, oh shit. If you're wondering why I mean bloody hell by a joke, well, you shot them in the face, it was blood spurting out, you know, as it does. Actually, um, it reminds me of uh, Bugs Life, the Disney movie, because I was watching that the other night, and... It's kind of weird how Disney movies and kids' films these days sort of censor out stuff, and then you have the older films like your Bugs Life, and they just really didn't care because they made things made the films basically for kids and adults. Because there's this one scene where a bunch of kids made like a diorama of the some of the bugs that Flick got to help, and them dying. And basically, it was just blood and guts everywhere. It's like, oh my god, this is a kid's movie. So, what? <laughs> who paid you off? Who wants a Billy Dad? Same guy who sent you to find her. We're in a hell of a business, old buddy. Nothing's ever what it seems. You'll never get out of Chicago without So, essentially, the goon, the main guy that we've been working for this whole time is a traitorous swine to his own daughter. What? <laughs> that makes no sense. I'm confused. But this move by here, Jerry, well, it isn't really implied upon too much, but Jerry is also a cop. However, he's betrayed the cause of the cop world to, well, be a dick, I suppose. Because he, um, this is way deep undercover on a mission with that goon, Wong, that we've been working for. Well, essentially, yeah, essentially, he's basically betrayed the cops and went straight with the triad goon. I think he's triad, anyway. I'm actually not sure. Golden Claw, maybe? I forgot. Iron Eyes? I forget the name of the gang. I think it might be Iron Eyes. So, yeah. Jerry, needless to say, is a bit of a dick. And we're gonna this mo this boss fight does take place in multiple phases. The first phase by here, he's gonna be sending all these swarms of mooks at you to kill. Basically kill the mooks, and whenever you get the chance, shoot at Jerry, his health will drop down. After you drop his health down a certain amount, he'll do a little pose, more mooks will come. And after a while he'll run away. Which uh, I'm hoping is pretty soon. And in fact, actually this boss fight is 
the most interesting one in the game because the third phase of the boss actually acts a lot like um, the average multiplayer match in this game, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen. Because he dives everywhere, you dive everywhere. I think you do about the same damage to each other, so yeah. If you want an experience of what the multiplayer mode is like without our multiplayer mode, then this boss fight is basically it. However, I say that, but the, I cheese the boss completely without fighting him the way the game expects you to, so... I don't know. Although I have to be... One thing I have to comment on, because it's been bugging me, and I haven't had the chance to comment on it but about this game yet. The cutscenes. Now, you might notice the cutscenes are like half a second desynced with the voices and the lip-sync movements. That is not audio recording failure, because if you tell when I'm shooting people here... Everything is perfect on time, you know, I made I always make sure that my videos aren't desynced as much as I can Some some instances I can't help it like in uh, the Jack HD trilogy, but I did my best at stop it on that, but um, Yeah, the cutscenes for some reason are desynced and it's not my recording software. It's the game the game is desynced there for some reason I don't know why Anyway, like I said when you get to this phase of the boss fight it is pretty much the equivalent of the average online match. So if you play online multiplayer, the fights will end up being like this, people ducking behind cover, diving out of the walls and stuff, but we have the ability of the tequila bombs. These, I don't think are online, or at least they're not online to the same level. So just equip the barrage of tequila bomb and just shoot Jerry in the face, what can I say? And when you run out of barrage, slow down time and well, shoot Jerry in the face. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm surprised not many game shooters do this type of gameplay, though. I mean, Max Payne did, and it works for Max Payne, especially Max Payne 3. I think that's the god the best gunplay of the entire series. It has its other problems and that the other series doesn't, but for the most part, Max Payne 3 is the best gunplay. But I digress. And I just want to live the life we should have had with there, Mr. Wong. Proof of life. Your daughter and granddaughter. Let me now describe what will happen if you choose to oppose me. I have names of cops, politicians, and your legal business fronts, all tied to Dragon Claw. If, however, you move against us, your daughter, Billy, will name those cops and politicians in a court of law and send you away. She'll do it to keep me from killing Tico. But none of it needs to happen if you just step down and give us Hong Kong. Your stranglehold has lasted far too long. <laughs> you didn't want them in your family, so I've taken them into mine. Okay, so that's why Wong killed Billy. I always got confused by that, so I never really paid attention to that cutscene as well as I should have. But, uh, yeah, there we go. When we return next time, we'll be act tackling the penultimate stage, the stage before the finale. We will be returning next time, ladies and gentlemen, with the final stretch. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. And when we return next time, well, I've already said what we're going to be doing, so we'll be doing that. So thanks for watching, people. I'll catch you all then. Bye!